It's been a while since I've done one of these videos and with the release of the most anticipated gacha game this year, Watering Wave, as well as Zenless Zone Zero with very mixed review from them, let's talk about the upcoming anime games for both mobiles and PC sooner or later. You guys seem to like the last one, so I'm going to be doing this every 6 months from now. What's up, my name is Zaki and I cover Ether Gazer and Strynova on my channel, though occasionally I talk about other games from time to time. There's definitely a lot of games in development, more than what I have on the list. So today we're going to be talking about the globally confirmed one, games that already have a release date announced, the China, Japan, Korea games that are unique enough and have a potential based on my perspective for a global release. Now keep in mind, there are a lot of games on this list and some information might not be 100% accurate. But I leave the link to the source in the Google spreadsheet and it can be found in the description of this video. Now let's get into it. Crystal of Atlan, developed by New Worlds, is a Eater Punk themed action MMORPG. It combines elements of fantasy and steampunk, offering players an immersive world filled with magic and advanced technology. Players choose from various characters, though they classify as class, but the genders are not swappable for each class and character customization are pretty limited, but there is skin in the game, and classes in this game can branch out to different subclasses. What stands out to me the most is the PvP in the game is just intense that most CM players would refer this game as the DNF MMORPG. The game does have the graphical standpoints almost similar to Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling, but sadly the game isn't an open world, which could appeal to players that try to avoid open world burnout. The game continued to update with various new classes. I am unsure of whether the game is pay to win heavy, but back when I was playing the game, it sounded like it's paid to be fast, but FFP requires more time, just like your simple MMORPG, but we all know that that's not the case. The game had had a few beta tests in the year 2022 and 2023. Recently had its first conference in San Francisco this year, April, and has been on a hiatus for almost 4 months. No de development news. Grand Saga is a gacha MMORPG developed by Antpixel. Emphasizing open-world real-time action combat, the game features gacha mechanics for obtaining skill cards, enhancing gameplay varieties, and more. The soundtrack includes composition by the renowned musician Yokoshi Momura, who is known for her work for Kingdom Hearts and Final Fantasy XV. The game boasts unique character design, and similar to Crystal of Atlan, is a character-based MMORPG. Combat plays a similarity to that of Xenoblade or FF14, known as real-time strategy. Grand Saga was released in Korea in 2021 and later in Taiwan at the end of 2021. While I'm not sure about its overall popularity, I do know that there are creators heavily invested in the game. The game also features in the future something called the Grand Transformation that each character has that makes them even more powerful. It's a really unique thing I find in MMORPG to do that because I used to play a lot of cable online, they had those battle modes and stuff. I kind of really love that kind of idea. The game also gave me the vibe of Grand Blue Fantasy Reeling as well as Final Fantasy Consider they did admit that they have a collaboration with Final Fantasy XV. Some of the logos is also inspired by Final Fantasy uh, styles and stuff like that. I mean, they even have Yokoshi Nomura composing the music. Anyways, Grand Saga is something I'm looking forward to play. It definitely looks like a very, very refreshing gacha game to be playing. Ace Force 2, developed by Tencent, is a 5 vs 5 hero-based tactical shooter. The game features diverse heroes, each with unique abilities, enabling strategic turn-team-based gameplay. Players can engage in intense matches across various modes and map, emphasizing fast-paced action and hero customization. They recently have an early access test on Google Play concluded on July 14, 2024 this year, and the developers are making adjustments based on players' feedback. I tried Ace Force 1 back in when it was only available in China. The game is heavily copyright with music due to you know having One OK Rock and many other anime and English songs in it. Uh, that's the reason why it never came to global, I think. But uh, mobile shooters aren't really that popular, so if you're looking for a PC shooter, the next game is going to be your taste. Despite waiting for almost 4 years now, Strider War, formerly known in China as Calabio, has been talked about by many creators including myself. But I was really really there since day one and I've been waiting for this game for a very long time. I played on day one but I decided to stop due to my busy schedule and terrible losing strike. Strynova is a third person shooter game that has many game modes but it's your typical rank climbing search and destroy with a unique gameplay call, a string mechanic which allow players to turn them into 2D paper mode or 2D Mario, whatever you want to call it. You have the ability to glide or blend to war for mobility and dodging bullet. It's not the only anime shooter out there, but it's one of the most unique out there. Uh, creators such as Karyu and Duanto did play this game and they also competed in the, uh, I, don't, I, w I would say like a beta tournament in Saudi Arabia. And two of these 
creators are really spreading the influence on Strano One. I'm really happy for the game. Even though the game says that it's being published by Dream Sky, but really it's just Tencent in disguise. I talked so much about Strano One, and according to someone I know, they said that the release date might be on October, but I doubt it. It might get pushed to December or maybe early 2025. What I'm talking about right now is so far the PC version of the game only. If you're looking forward to the mobile version, it's currently having a beta test in CN. A lot of things like chat progress and stuff and skin, I'm not sure about that. But when there is more news, stay tuned on my channel. I will talk about Strynova, whether it's PC or mobile. Developed by Amazing Season Games, Mega Break, the same developer behind Snowbreak Containment Zone, is a multiplayer mech combat set in a futuristic sci-fi realm. Players can unlock diverse mechs with unique fighting style, customize their appearance, and prepare for intense battle. The game is currently planned for PC and Xbox series, though a mobile version may be possible given the developer's background. Especially, you know, China's always like, oh, this game is only for PC. Even for like games like Naraka, and I was really shocked. So yeah, yeah, it's a potential for a mobile version, but we, we don't know that yet. So Mega Break offers various modes such as Deathmatch, Capture the Flag, and potentially a Battle Royale mode that one of my friends tried to grill me into trying the beta. I was like, I don't really have the time, but he said there is a Battle Royale mode. The latest trailers of Mega Break indicate that the release is going to be in 2025. I have not played the beta. I was invited multiple times, but I wasn't really like gonna get into more PvP game. Maybe just trying to wise enough. Persona 5X, The Phantom X, developed by Perfect World, who also published the global version of Tower of Fantasy, so I expect a lot of changes from this game, probably nerf and buff if the game is set to develop on global, and they'll consider it like making the improving the global experience. I hope that does not happen, considering that Tencent does pretty well in Nikkei Goddess of Victory. Persona 5X is also, also officially licensed by Atlas, rightful owner of the Persona title. This game is your typical turn-based gacha game, RPG set in the universe of Persona 5. Though I have heard fans telling me it's more of a multiverse spin-off game which is, isn't canon, but I'm not sure about that. The game retains the signature aesthetic and gameplay element of the main series while introducing new features tailored for the mobile and PC platform. Players will engage in strategic turn-based battle, collect and summon various Persona. Fusion is still going to be a thing in the game and explore a new storyline set in the familiar world of Persona 5. Persona 5 Royal is still in my backlog as I clear every other gacha game such as Tales of Arise, Scarlet Nexus, and more. So I might finally be able to get into it. Don't judge me. I know what Persona is. I know what I'm talking about. I have played Persona 3 Fast, Portable, and Persona 4, and Golden as well. So I'm very well versed with the style of Persona. I'm really excited for Persona 5X of Phantom Days, something that I want to play on this channel as well. The community has a English translator patched into the game, allowing English community to play the game while it's being out of translate in between. I actually did that myself and was able to play quite a chunk of it. I can't really squeeze in a lot of information about Persona 5 Royal. You're expecting something from Persona 5? I've been really enjoying the game. I've been playing on the CN version myself. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'll probably make a full review when the game has a global announcement. By the developers of Manju, who is very well known for their fan service game, Azura Lane, comes Azura Promilia. The game developers for Azura Lane, not to confuse with Yosa, who just publishers of the game, when the trailers for Azura Promilia was released or was dropped, it exploded the gacha community. Amazed by how amazing the game is, just when anime gun abusing power was on trending, Azura Promilia came being announced. The game was backlash though for its decisions of only having female character in the game aside from the protagonist. There's actually a male and female protagonist from what I was told, so I don't really know how you, most people will feel about that. The game also allows you to have your very own monsters, companion traveling around the world, flying or maybe helping you with your Harvest Moon stuff. Yes, the game does have the Harvest Moon or Ruin Factory feature, so if you came back from a very tired day and you wanted to relax, I think Azura, Azura Promelia might be the best game to be playing. The game features a character swapping mechanic which I'm really tired by now, similar to of Genshin which is a big turn off. I mean, can you guys come up with something more creative? Character popping is getting old man. So yeah, Azura Promelia is one of the most anticipated games by many gacha gamers out there. So uh, myself included, I definitely want to play this and try it out for myself. Although there hasn't been a global announcement yet. But with such a big impact, I doubt that Manju doesn't want to have a global version of it. 
And I'm most likely think that the global version and the China version might came out simultaneously because of how you know you have to look at the company background, their stable and stuff like that, like Genshin or MiHoYo. Maybe Manju has the capability of you know releasing it simultaneously. That's just my speculation. So let's talk about the next game. Drive Nine is an anime by Liden Film aired in 2022. The game is currently being developed by Tokyo Game and published by Akatsuki Gaming, self-proclaimed extreme action RPG. Trap Nine follows the classic pixel art style with 3D environment with the classic RPG touch encounter. You know, you touch that and then you enter into a 3D combat mode. Uh, I've I've heard about the game being more of a baseball kind of style, but uh, so far I haven't. I, I was invited to the beta. I applied it. I got it, but I didn't really play it as well. I'm a terrible content creator. I'm sorry. But the game, from what I've seen, is pretty much just like Star Ocean Anamnesis. But this game packs a lot more. The story follows where a group of teens who endure multiple losses and devise strategies to overcome those formidable blah blah blah. There's a lot of things, but、uh, the art style is being、uh, created by the creators of Danganronpa. If you're familiar with that, the pixel in the game and the UI are super clean and super creative, giving you the Zelda Zone Zero or a modern gacha game RPG rather than your you know typical boring manual. I do not think that modern gacha gamers would love the pixel stuff, but I would say that it would attract a lot more retro gamers. And the BGM in this game is also insane, so I'm not sure how to feel about this game because let me let me be honest with you: younger generation tends to love open world or popularity or you know high graphic games. They don't appreciate pixels and stuff like that. But hey, who knows, right? Another game by Akatsuki Gaming, which is still in development yet no further progress has been announced ever since it, it teases its trailer. This game was announced in Tap Tap Present in 2021, if I remember correctly, and they did know that they haven't dropped the game yet. They are still recruiting people. This is a 3D action cyberpunk ninja hack and slash game. I can see the heavy influence of Senra Kagura in this game, but hey. It looks like it's on the same par level as Project Mugen as well. So give it time. I really hope we receive news from Akatsuki Gaming. All the listed game on their website hasn't been taken down yet, so I'm assuming they're they are still cooking. They are still cooking. Also on their official website is a combination of English and Japanese text. However, they do state that for this game, they are still recruiting people to work on the game. So hopefully, I hope they don't give up on the game yet. Kaiju Number Eight was one of the most recent anime I watched, and I really like how they had One Republic setting the ending of the anime. To be honest, the anime gave me the similar vibe of Attack on Titan as well as My Hero Academia, but I'm not gonna spoil it here. Again, a game by Akatsuki Game. They have three on the list right now. While there hasn't been an official release date nor a significant gameplay trailer, it seems like the game might be. Having a high chance of a hero collector, most likely. Obviously, people still think it's gonna be a sim- different thing. But so far, what the trailer has shown is a CGI trailer. Nothing about the gameplay has been shown. So this is all I can tell you about now. However, pre-registration are open on the official website, stating indicating that the developers do have a brighter, broader release, maybe to international level. Right now, I can't tell you much about Kaiju Number Eight. But at least they have plan for global release. Oh, where do I even start with this one? Initially teased in Tap Tap Present 2021 once again, a terror restart by a company known as XD announced a Steam release date in 2023, but then pushed it to 2024. However, due to the timing of Honkai Star release back then, the game delayed its global launch until who knows when. Continue to actively update the Chinese version, maintaining engagement on platforms like Weibo and Bilibili, also having their third technical test in fall 2024. The development of the game is still ongoing in China. There's still news on both platforms like Weibo or Bilibili. But if you go to the global or the international Twitter or Facebook or even their Discord, it's flooded with like 18 plus stuff and、uh, not just the Discord, but the Twitter and the Facebook hasn't been giving players any update. So while there is Still, like a plan for China, because of、uh, I've seen the trailers of the recent trailers of the characters, they did make a lot of big improvement. I'm not sure whether there's gonna be a global release. What we might be expecting here is that they might release the game on China, see how it does, and then decided to release on global. Wow, <laughs> Project Nordium goes way back, but a few days ago I was able to play it on the live stream, showcasing two videos, one on the live stream as well as one of all the characters' gameplay. Click on the top right if you wish to check them out right now. Project Nordium is a Mecha Girl team air combat action role playing game. If I would put it in a way, the gameplay features an omni-direction combat, but I would really quote this game as Space Honkai Impact to understand in a simple term. 
The game is currently under development by Flaring Cloister, a Chinese developer. The game is also available to pre-register on Steam, though English language isn't supported. But funny how I was able to play the beta when they say there's an early access. Uh, during the beta test, they already have like a spending event. You know, if you spend now, you get more cash back during the release. So I would say that the release is soon. But what I've seen when I play the game, it doesn't. It, it feels like it needs a lot more work. It's not on the same level as Honkai Impact, PGR, or even Eater Gazer. If we put like Eater Gazer at third place. I don't think like Nornium is even close. They need to work on a lot of things still. Like uh, some of the shading, some of the story is terrible. But the game is set for a how do I put it? A fan service? No, the snow break route, if I had to say so. So yeah, um, snow, uh, Project Nornium they have delayed their few beta tests due to their inexperience of pu uh, publishing the game on Steam. So, but I think the game is most likely coming out early 2025. But I would not urge them to rush, I feel like they have a lot of work still. Alright, here comes a game that is not gacha or maybe gacha based on cosmetic only, similar, similar to Stride Nova. Combining mobile mechanics with Smash Bros concept, Azura Jung brings a whole new style for mobile players. With its Unix Fusion, recently had their beta test on August 2024, Azura Jung is only planned for PC. Well, I don't think the game is going to be massively successful globally, but consider that Korean gamers do love Eternal Return. I think Azura Jung is targeted towards this audience. I'm sure players will be able to have a good lobby matchmaking in the Asia server. The game looks really fun if you're looking for a non-gacha, a, a one-time play thing. Uh, but you know, this kind of ranking game like Strynova or you know, mobile games, Eternal Return or whatever you play, Mobile Legends, climbing rank can be really stressful and uh, it's up to you. Like, but I, I, I'll mention it here. I think the gameplay is really creative. Next, we have Uma Musume Pretty Derbies by Saigame. Uma Musume is a horse racing simulation by Saigame. It's officially getting a global release. The game, which has been a huge hit in Japan since its release in February 2021, will now be available very soon in English across Android and only iOS, no PC release. Though a gacha game, the game is a racing simulation, allowing players to go through a specific campaign mode to train your um, horse waifu or horse girl and compete on a scheduled date. It seems like this time Saigen is a standalone publisher as they might have learned their lesson from Kanjiro regarding the tragedy of Princess Connect Redive. I played a fair share of this game for a few months when it was released. It was certainly fun. Arc Knight and Field by Griffline. Its successor Arc Knight and its recently released premium game accessories comes Arc Knight and Field, an upcoming 3D real time RPG by Griffline. And Field inherits the same universe but introduces a new storyline, character, and gameplay mechanic. Player play as the administrator, who apparently, just like every other gacha product, has their memory lost. I was lucky enough to be playing the technical task. The combat in this game is more of a real time action strategy similar to. Xenoblade or FF14, while the world is considered open world, but is actually a structured open world, meaning most of the world just has an open world perspective, but it's actually a structured map. If you play Tales of Arise, you probably understand that they mentioned it's an open world, but not really. It's a loading screen with a lot of loading screen, and then it's just a structure, one pathway. So uh, I don't know how they feel because it seems like they, after the technical test, they've been on a very long hiatus. They're probably working on the game a lot more. The game also offers a base system where you do crafting, mining, and more. A favor to those who love uh, Ruin Factory, though not really my type because I'm really already tired from work. I don't really want to be doing more chores, so uh, not my type. So their last technical test was on January, so ever since that they haven't been on anything or lately. But uh, they will be appearing on Gamescom, so they did announce that on their all of their media, so looking forward to that. What I'm looking forward the most is that what changes they're making forward to it. Because uh, a lot of people don't seem to like the combat system as well as the uh, the base system. But uh, I don't know. We can only wait and see what they do. <sighs> Kingdom Heart Missing Link by Square Enix. I'm pretty sure Kingdom Heart is a really difficult game to get into. But Kingdom Heart series has established a pretty intense combat mechanic that is really fun. Square Enix has had multiple mobile gacha games for this IP and it's actually canon to this main storyline. Um, yeah, I don't know why, but most people tend to do that. Most of them shut down, so you can expect this one as well when Square Enix milks enough out of it. In this game, you'll be able to have your own OC as Keyblade Master. This time with a 3D action gameplay, Square Enix really outdid themselves, but the game is just like Pokemon Go or Monster Hunter now. 
it requires you to go out, so it, it kind of sucks unless you play with an emulator with a location modifier. But uh, overall, the combat in this game is amazing. They have the trophy system, which I think is going to be most likely gacha. But aside that, I don't know how to feel about Kingdom Hearts Missing Link. Um, Square Enix did recently have their title Ever Crisis, Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis. And that is doing actually well in Japan and global as well, but not to the most massive level like Genshin, like a middle grade, still paying salary and stuff. Much more of a soul like RPG, many proclaim that Unending Dawn is picking up where Code Wayne by Bandai Namco left off. An open world action RPG with anime aesthetic, inspired by works such as Elden Ring and Sekiro or even Soul Like, developed using Unreal Engine 5. Gaming communities has a little source whether it will be a gacha game but a page named China Hero Project which promote Chinese games stated that this is a multiplayer open world action game uh, that hasn't been proven yet so I don't know whether it's gacha and according to Chinese news is going to be a multiplayer open world game. The game was recently showcased in public at China Joy 2024 and seems to be a gacha game if you pay attention to the top right wall at the controller guide interface confirmed the game is coming out for PlayStation. Now the game is most likely coming for Android, iOS, PC but we can now confirm that it's coming out for PlayStation 5 or that could be a controller of PlayStation plug in PC that's why it shows them but uh, I could be wrong but it has been confirmed for PS5 okay. Girls Frontline 2 XM is a tactical RPG and the sequel to the original Girls Frontline developed by Sunborn Network the game continues the narrative in a post-apocalyptic setting where players command tactical dolls known as T-Dolls to fight against various threat. The Chinese version of the game was released on December 21, 2023, and the global version is still in development with social media and official website set up in July 2024. Now initially, the game had a lot of problem releasing in China, like, you know, something with your hard disk and stuff happened, if not some of you actually remember it. I, I That's the reason why I tried to avoid this game when it was on, on beta, because that was a problem. But overall, the game came back strong. It has a solid fan base and it has a very nice graphic. And to those who are into tactical RPG and waifu as well, it's going to be really fun. The dorm, uh, the game also has like a dorm system. So uh, looks like everyone is going through the snow break route. I'm not a big fan of tactical game, but uh, Girl Fun Line 2 is definitely a must try on my list. Dread Knight Abyss is an upcoming action RPG developed by Pan Studio under Heroes Entertainment. The game features fast-paced combat and a high degree of freedom similar to the gameplay style of Warframe. Uh, Chinese players has compared this game with Warframe as seen similar animation, so yeah. Player will explore a world where magic and machinery coexist, taking on the roles of two protagonists with different backgrounds. The game emphasizes on dynamic combat with the ability to switch between melee and ranged weapons. The gameplay of the game offers multiple weapon loadout and parkour mechanics. The game has had its recent test in May 2024 globally, which they have found quite a lot of bug and problems, so they needed to work on it. So one thing, it's confirmed for global. Second thing, we don't know when's the next test, but I say another game that we should let them cook. Inspired by Insomniac Spider-Man web slinging and Grand Theft Auto open world concept with the fusion of Genshin Impact combat system comes Project Mugen. In development by NetEase Studios Naked Rain, the game was announced in August 2023, but there has been no specific release date yet. With pre-registration over the top number, combat system seems similar to Genshin Impact or Watering Wave, but what caught the audience's attention is the world traversal system. The developers also promised that they'll be trying to update a new map every year. Uh, in this game, you'll be able to ride cars, you'll be able to, I don't know, go to the beach. Um, seems like the GTA experience with anime and entities or stuff like that. But when Project Mugen released their trailers, they just nail the trailer, the music, the transition, everything just works perfectly together. But ever since then, uh, developers really haven't been updating people regarding anything about the game. So it's kind of sad, you know. And again, um, a lot of people said that they might play it, but they might not be heavily invested because NetEase has been having like a very terrible news about themselves. So I, I don't know about that, but... um. Uh, I think that is did a very good job with the trailers for Project Mugen that it changed my mind about them. But it is that is, so I say be careful. <sighs> to be honest, I really haven't looked into a lot regarding narrowness to Aranus. This is the version of Project Mugen of Tencent. NetEase and Tencent are like competitors in China when it comes to mobile gaming development or music production. With Mugen being no news and on hiatus, it felt like Tencent brought a lot of things and seems like 
is trying to rush to the market first because it it is also a GTA game with car riding with no web slinging though but combat seems very basic I, I know that when Neverness to Everness was released everyone was mind blowing oh another open world gacha game dude you are going to be so burnt out number one and second the gameplay isn't something really interesting it's it's another game with Genshin pop and pop off I know Project Mugen was doing something similar it's, it feel like two of these are clashing in between and both of these companies have bad reputation NetEase and Tencent, Tencent with Tower of Fantasy. I really don't know how to feel about Neverness to Everness. They don't really even nail the trailers. Gameplay seems very basic. But uh, I know that uh, Gateo, a Tower of Fantasy creator, has been talking a lot about this game. But I'm honestly really not interested in Neverness to Everness. But it has brought a very big impact to the Gacha community, so I included it in the list. Boy oh boy, I talk about Naraka a lot on this channel, the PC, the mobiles. Naraka is a game that's out on PC for a very long run and is officially now free. While not popular in the West, Naraka is famously known and popular in China and one of the most competitive battle royale hack and slash games. The global version was announced on TapTap Tap Present 2021, which was probably three years, almost three years ago, and finally released July 2024 in China only. Now, the game is very complicated. If you think you're really good in playing mobile games, you're really good in warring with and pairing, you don't know how Naraka is. Naraka, I would say, is basically the PvP version of Warring Wave. Naraka is a high ceiling game, and it used to be very popular with very big price for eSport, but uh, right now, I think it's not really that popular in global. It's really popular in Southeast Asia or Asia itself because, you know, Asia people, they just like Xing Xing. The combat uh, revolves around a rock, paper, scissors combat mechanics such as light attack, counters, and heavy attack, which one is weaker against which. And oh, we have a mixture of grappling as well, which uh, makes it a very, very attack on Titan feel. But uh, Naraka is a really fun game. It's just not marketed properly by NetEase. Yes, this game is by NetEase as well. Star Wars, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I talk about games that I find unique and I honestly don't think this game is coming out global because people prefer PvE or PvP in global. Star Wars is basically Gundam maximum boost except with a gacha system and more of a 2v2 uh, ranking system, climbing the rank if you're looking for a game that's uh, PvP then Star Wars might be the game for you. Now this game is available on Steam if you want to go try out yourself. I haven't tried it out myself because I don't think this game has a potential but it's still unique. But the reason why I don't think it has a potential is because global gacha gamers prefer PvE over PvP and you know, I don't. I just don't think this game would work. It, number two problem is that it's a PvP game but it has a gacha system, you know, it's going to be very pay to win heavy. But overall, the gameplay looks very unique. Uh, it, a lot of this is just a reskin of the Gundam Maximum Boost, where they take the Gundam game and just reskin it into Waifu. But overall, if you're looking for a, a PvP game with a, one one of your friend, two person, then I think this game is the best one for you to go. Either way, I don't think it's going coming out global. You can start playing in the CN version of the game. If you haven't heard of Honor of King, it's one of the most popular mobile games right now. It was released in China for a very long time, but right now it's released globally. And everywhere I go in the mall, I've seen the advertisement for Honor of King. I mean, damn. Honor of King is as big as Genshin Impact in China. The game also has a Smash Bros version, but this time we're talking about a Battle Royale version of the game, competing with NetEase with its Naraka. Ooh, Tencent uses its popular IP to draw out its player to try out their new Battle Royale game. I don't know how to feel about this because number one, they have their mobile game. Number two, they have their Smash Bros game. Number three, now they have their Battle Royale game. Do they ever have time for other games? I mean, all these games are ranking grinding. So uh, I think this game is going to be very unique. It's a Battle Royale, but again, Battle Royale genre is dying at least at the global scale. So people in global don't really care about Battle Royale these days. But one thing for sure is that PvE never dies. So I don't know how to feel about this game, but I do think that it has potential for a global release. Our turn out well, Blue Exorcist, another story is developed by Aniplex, the same company that developed Fate Grand Order. I've never watched Blue Exorcist before, but it seems like this game is a hack and slash game with you, the main protagonist, have the ability to change the ending. Now, my friend has been wanting me to watch this, so I might give it a try, but uh, from what I've seen, it seems like a hack and slash game and most likely a gacha hero collector. But uh, if you're looking for more of this anime Blue Exorcist and wanted a different ending, I guess this could be a good game. Well, I don't know, but this game has been confirmed. It's uh, available for pre-registration on Play Store. And uh, the official website is also set up. Wang Ye. 
an open world fantasy gacha RPG recently received its game license. Another game just, you know, feels like it's similar to Genshin Impact where you can, you know, pop characters and stuff like that, except, you know, different story, different difficulty level. I don't know, man. When I check out uh, Watering Wave, it felt like, yes, I'm playing the same as Genshin, but better. It doesn't change a lot. So I'm hoping this one of these games can be a little bit different. So yeah, uh, they've been working diligently over the past nine months to optimize the game and prepare new contents. They're having a technical test coming out very soon for one year. But uh, the good thing is that they received the game license, but no global confirmation has been confirmed of yet. But at least they're still ongoing in China. The combat system includes a Azura Pro Media twist, allowing players to summon um, some sort of echoes during the fight. Wicker Riding does have in this game similar to uh, Neverness to Everness as well as Project Mugen. Aside from that, I don't think this game stand out to be unique. They might, they, they, I mean, they're, they're copying everything, but they need to have something unique of their own. Aside from just waifu and everything. Heaven Burn Red is a turn-based RPG with a heavily emphasized on story developed by, developed by the authors of the anime Angel Beat Jun Ada. The game is known for its compelling narrative. The game has been confirmed for global by its publisher Yostar. The Japanese version of the game has always been available on Steam and did have a collab with its popular anime itself, Angel Beat. Now the game has very interesting graphic and the gameplay seems like a turn-based star real thing i know but uh, according to a few comments i read on youtube in japanese that they play until they cry about this game it's really touching that they do have a very good music as well the open world takes an aspect of 2d exploration with side scrolling and it seems to be set in the modern day so if you're looking for a compelling story the one that could make you cry maybe heaven's burn red is something you ought to play another game by aniplex is madoka magica magia etc it is an rpg based on the popular game anime series Pola Maga Magi Madoka Magica. I think I got it wrong, but the game features a dark and captivating storyline, turn based combat, which uh, seems like it copies Star Rail again, but uh, which, like, maybe the angle style. People did say, like, a persona is copying Star Rail, whatever, but really, you can't really run far with turn based game, you know? It's still turn based, it still has a thing of its own, it's still creativity and stuff like that, it's still planning. So yeah, a player will control magical girls with uh, unique abilities to fight against witch and uncover the mysteries of the game. So the game is currently in development and available for pre-registration on Steam and as well as a English website setup. Now I definitely have no idea what this game is all about from what I can tell, it's an idol simulator plus combat. Maybe players will be managing the idols while they're fighting but uh, according to the translation from you, um, the description by Google Translate, the girl feature in the game are renowned as VTuber and in their world, but are battling idols in a parallel universe called the Virtual Circle. Players can form team, build lineup, and compete with legendary idols from different teams across various what if scenarios. Ooh, I is this like a VTuber game or something like that? I I never watched Holo Live, so I don't know much about Holo Live. So uh, is any of these characters familiar? I don't know. It's if you can tell me if I'm wrong. The game combines strong combat performance with strategic gameplay, but I don't think the one that's shown in the trailer is actually an actual gameplay. Maybe, maybe not. Consider that the official trailer is English sub by the official, perhaps we're in for a treat, maybe there is a global plan. We're down to our last list, which is Abyss Night, made by Unreal Engine 5, translated by Google as Abyss Night, is a Diablo-like RPG. Once again, the Chinese developers has released this game with an English subject trailer from their official Bilibili account. Impressingly, according to Intel, the game might be for other platforms such as PlayStation, but uh, we know that the most likely potential is a PC. So this game is going to be for Android, iOS, and PC. Not sure if they have a PlayStation in mind, but uh, I think this game really takes the bird eye view combat to a very fluid, fluid level. It seems very clean. It seems like it's not too messy. It seems like it's really fun to play. There's a lot of games that are actually in development, especially in Korea, Japan, and China. But sadly, the one I mentioned are confirmed for global or having a high potential for a global debut. If there's any game that I miss out, be sure to comment down in the comment section below. And if you like this kind of video and wish to see more, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know. My name is Zaki and hey, it's just a game channel.